去毕业的生活。无论毕业你要上几所啊？我买一票，你牛货，你牛货吧？啊，我买几所的？也一年，也五啦，也买一年。哈利路亚。还能赔一，一十五的呢。Bau di nusu ya kro, uye yang ini nanti, ano pay ya kotu, ano pay ya sorrow, uye yang ini nanti, diwajib. Aku menyerah ya odia, ano pay ya bu emu asemau, oni emura. We magnify you, we bless thy holy name, we adore you. Our God and our Father, our King, Hallelujah. our eternal King, yes, God. my God, Jesus. we bless thy holy name. Amen. We bless you from now on to eternity. Jesus. We worship you, my God. Hallelujah. There is no God besides you. Mm. We acknowledge you. You are the true King, our eternal King. Amen. We bless you. Amen. Amen.
Glory, 
the Holy Ghost brings the noise in the house. Make some Holy Ghost crazy noise in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. God is good. Yes, he's good. I am so thrilled. Amen. Because I see a very bright future. Hallelujah. And God is raising yet another army in our generation. Don't be like my grandmother. She, she said, I love English songs. But when you sing, she doesn't understand. <laughs> and then she go like, I have forgotten all my English. Amen. Amen. We bless God for life. We want to listen to the word of God. And then today is a very special day. We have some other things to do. But I want to introduce to you, um, right from here, Mrs. Boache is in the house. These people have been helping the young people in this church, talking about the youth and PEMSA. And then Daniela is our MC for today. Bless you. We have our elders around helping us. Our sister Magdalene is here doing a great job with the youth ministry. And our sister Doris is also here. Yes. God bless you. Amen. But let me introduce you. We have three of our district executive members in terms of the youth ministry in our midst. And we are blessed to introduce to you Sister Ama Amon, who is the secretary. Yes. Hallelujah. Up and coming lawyer. Yes. Amen. Yes, with an exception. Amen. Our brother Patrick Afrani, who happened to be here. Local leader. And then, of course, our leader, Dickon Dominic Francis. And of course, we have our wonderful Romeo and the wife in the house. And the latest couple in town. Your mouth be open. Yes. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth. Don't let people come and take them away. Yes. Uh, Amen. Amen. Yeah, the ladies are here. Yes. Hi. There is nothing like marrying from Pentecost. I tell you. They all know. All right. Of course, we have our Papa Kusi and our Mama in the house, Grandma, Grandpa, God bless you. Hallelujah. And you, our evangelist all the way from Ghana, the area there. Amen. So, yes. Mama Florence and Papa Kenny. Hallelujah. Amen. The person he has prepared is no other person but our own brother, friend, and son. You want to know? Yes. Apology. Yes. Apology. Yes. 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 Yes.
But what the Bible says in Proverbs is that train up a child in the way he should go. So that. Because seriously, when we look at the way the world is, and we look at how these people in the world, like let's look at the Parkland shooting, for instance. People who were just killed off. People who were neglected by the parents and people who were supposed to be the support system around them. Thirteen kids who expected to come home that day were just shot and killed by someone who did not have the right direction in their life. As Christian youth, let us seek God's direction. Okay, now I'm going to start from Abraham. We go to, we go to Genesis 22, 1 going. I'm going to just read there and we'll yeah. so said, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said unto him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Yeah. Sacrifice your one and only son. As we see our wonderful uh, mother here today. She has her son she has her son or daughter there. And if God had told her to sacrifice that son, I think that she'd be like, No, not my son. Or even Papadou, for instance. If God told you to sacrifice Papadou, I don't think you'd do it. And if Papadou understood the implications of what he was about to do, he probably wouldn't do it either. But as we keep going, we hear that Isaac was an obedient child, and he went on even in this situation. Hmm. An obedient child. Sometimes in this society, we're often taught that if we have the better idea, we often should just push those who are older aside and just do what we have to do. At times, this is good. But most times, you give respect to those respect is due. God gave Abraham this direction. And when God gives you as a family direction, you must teach your kids to follow that as well. So it says in verse 3, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded up his donkey. And he took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When they cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he sent 
out to the place of God told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go up over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham, even though here he was realizing that he was going to sacrifice his son, he had the expectancy that he would come back with the son. Now Abraham There are some people with children here who are not in the church. But, but let us understand that God will bring them back in His time. And it's with this understanding that sometimes God uses our kids to test us. Sometimes, yeah, See, oftentimes, people are saying, "Oh, um, First Samuel 3. The Lord had revealed to Samuel that the sons of Eli he had destined to destroy. Eli, the high priest's own kids. These people who were supposed to be the next generation of priests and kings and judges are sitting in the church. But you know, when those people sin, when even the pastor children sin, God chooses someone else. And he told Samuel, and he revealed this to Samuel. In the night, he, God came to Samuel and he spoke to Samuel. At first, he didn't recognize what God's voice was. He thought it was Eli calling him. What Samuel recognized later that Eli told him that, hey, if this voice calls you one more time, all you need to do is say, Lord, speak for thy servant here. At almost eight years old. <laughs> almost eight years old. He is hearing from the Lord. Let the Lord let let us be able to hear from the Lord at any age that we are. So if we go, if we turn our Bibles to First Samuel three. He said that. The Lord had said that he had determined to destroy the house of Eli. And if you read on and on, since I don't have as much time, God did in fact kill the sons Hophni and Phinehas. He killed them all. But Samuel became a great judge in Israel. Obedience unto God. When you look at Samuel's upbringing, Hannah was a person who came to Shiloh because she was looking for son. If you look in the beginning of 1 Samuel, it talked about how she was praying and crying and crying like, God, give me a son. And at that point, some people in the church thought she was drunk. Something's wrong with her head. But God, in His wisdom, looked with favor upon her prayer. And Hannah said, If you give me a son, I shall dedicate him to you for all of his life. Let us live in the Lord's house all the days of our life. So when we recognize that Samuel was offered unto God as an offering, his first, the first son was offered to God. Oftentimes, my mom says the first son is the the lead. So as you. However, God ushers the first son in. The other little ones will follow. So, 
If you look at what Hannah did, Hannah offered up his first, her first son. And then the Bible says Samuel lived and slept close to the altar. So for some of you, imagine sleeping here. <laughs> not, not in your bed at home. There. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yet, even at that moment, God spoke to Samuel, and God was interacting with Samuel because Samuel had unveiled his heart to him at an early age. As young Christians, let us avail ourselves to God. Let us recognize that the God that we are serving is not a God that we should play with. It says, seek the Lord in your youth. Seek the Lord in your youth. Oftentimes, as a world and as a culture, we don't seek the Lord. That's why we fail a lot. Yeah. For instance, you look at Saul, what he did. The Bible talks about how Samuel said, Saul, wait here. Do not make this offering wait. When I come, we will do the offering. But Saul, because he feared the people, disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. At any age, we must learn to obey the commandments of the Lord. No matter what our parents think, what our church thinks, what our work thinks, what the president thinks, whatever anybody thinks, we must learn to obey the work of the Lord. So I disobeyed the Lord many times and it cost him his kingship. So, but thanks be to God that even after Saul had sinned, God had ordained someone else. David, a man after God's own heart. Oh, David, the David, the one who wanted to slay Goliath and have songs sang for him. That David, Saul slayed his thousands. David slayed his ten thousands. Ah, David, do be old. You go right. So you go as Saul told you, man. Say, ah, I'm on for say Saul. He go a pim. Now David, you go a pim, pim, and pim, and pim, pim. David. So what we recognize, what we okay, let's go to this next example of David. So well, let's talk about his him and his family. He was not the best looking kid. In fact, if you looked at David, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that he's the king. But God used him, he said. Look not at his height nor his countenance, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Oftentimes, as people in this church, we have a society which tells us that we're not good enough. We're not tall enough. We don't look enough. We don't look good enough. But what the Bible is trying to tell us here is that God does not look at height, he doesn't look at appearance as man looks, but he looks at the heart. The heart. He said, there will come a time where love will grow cold. In the end times, love will grow cold. Does it sound familiar? In our, in our world right now, People are dying. Storms are happening. All these things that the Lord had prophesied years before any many of us were even born are happening. And people's love for God has grown cold. Studies are showing a downward trend in youth going to church. Let our love for God not grow cold. So, 2 Samuel chapter 1, keep in this, this start off from yeah, 2 Samuel 1 going. Right? Okay. All right. So, in the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to the towns of Judah? He asked to the Lord, 
And the Lord said, Go up, where I shall go, to Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up there with his two wives, Anohem and Jezreel, and Abigail and the widow, Nabal of Carmel. David took, his two, took the men who were with him, each with his family, and they settled in Hebron and town. So what we're seeing here is that many times, there are many examples of David looking for God's direction for you. At this point, David had already been anointed king. But what we recognize is that Saul was still alive. We, David had the obedience and the patience to wait that the thing that God was going to do for him in making him king, it would come to pass. And the funny thing is that Jonathan realized that David was going to become king too. Jonathan and his family, who were supposed to be next in line to the throne. What we come to recognize is that Jonathan became best friends with David. His own competition was becoming friends. When you have the favor of God in your life and when you are obeying Christ, people who were initially supposed to be your enemies, people who were initially supposed to hate you, people who were supposed to look at you and say, hey, I don't like you because you're black. I don't like you because you're a woman. I don't like you because you like God. God was going to change their mind and give you favor. And what we've come to recognize is that David loved Jonathan more than a brother. David loved Jonathan more than a brother and more than a wife. So when Jonathan died, David mourned and wept. Well, let's understand that we should not mourn, but we should really obey God. Alright, so let's go on. Let's go on to um So yeah, let's let's go on to um where is his we have one second. Let's go on to times when he had sinned against God. David. 2 Samuel 11. Chapter 11. 2 Samuel 11. Chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11. Let me just going to start and just keep going. Okay. Yeah, waiting for this to load. Yeah. Second Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11. 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 Chapter of the palace, and from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So what we see here initially, and I'm just going to go through it really quickly, and just give you the gist of it. David was pretty old at this time. Yeah, and um, well, like most men, you know, his eyes were wandering. <laughs> his eyes were wandering, and he saw Bathsheba. Yeah. So what happened was that he was like this, I, this girl, I've got to get her. But the Lord, in his sovereignty, was watching him. The man after God's own heart, look at him sitting now. And the Bible says that if you keep going on, David planned that Uriah would be killed so he could take the wife. Because it says, because in Hebrew law, basically if a brother dies or someone dies, you can take up the wife. Yeah. He's gonna kill a woman. He's gonna kill a man just to get a woman. David, this act of disobedience, God would punish by killing off their first son. But we as Christians disobey God. Sometimes the punishments can be severe. 
I once had an auntie who had directed from the Lord that she should give this place to some kids in the family who needed it. But she did not listen. And what happened was that over time, the, you know, you know what happened in the housing crisis of 2004, 2008, she lost her house. She lost many things in successive in succession. Because she disobeyed God in that one instance. As Christians, let us learn to obey God because if we don't, it's costly. So, what happens as we keep going is that, yes, David's first son died, but luckily, God in His mercy. God in his mercy gave him a second son, Solomon. To put in place of the one that had died. As I bring this message to a close, because my time is pretty much running out. As Christians, as New Testament Christians, our one obedience, our one allegiance, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 pledge back home. Amen, amen, amen. Our one allegiance is to Christ. Yeah, in time, Cassia, you want my crystal. The temple, as Christians, especially in these end times, in these times in particular, as young Christians, as old Christians, whatever. We should follow Christ and understand the gift of his salvation that he's given to all of us. The gift of salvation that he's given to us. When I was first speaking, I talked about how Abraham had to go sacrifice his son Isaac. And Abraham had obeyed. And thanks be to God. God brought a goat to put in Isaac's place. Now let us recognize that man had sinned before. Man in the Garden of Eden had everything. Because, because they sinned, they had fallen short of the glory of God. And after that, in those, succession, in those successive times, what happened was that every time they wanted to come into the presence of God and wanted to repent, they had to offer up a sacrifice. Sacrifice sometimes of some vegetables, fruits, but oftentimes of goats, lambs, and bulls with no infirmity. But thanks be to God that there was this one guy named Jesus Christ who was obedient unto death so that you and I could have this. Life. As young Christians, as old Christians, technically all of us are young Christians because in when you look at God and how old God is, we're all young in comparison to <laughs> But as young Christians, let us recognize the, the enormity of what God has done for us. The enormity of what God has done for us. God in his wisdom could have sacrificed an angel. sacrificed an angel. In fact, if you look in, if, in fact, if you look in the New Testament, you keep going on. In Luke, it got to a certain point where Jesus Christ prayed and he's like, God, look at all their sins. This cup is overflowing. Lord, if it is your will, take this cup from me. My sins. Your sins. Yeah. All of our sins. 
Both the ones we know and the ones we did not know. Sometimes we are in this church and we're gossiping about people who we don't even know. We are sinning and we're lying in this church and we think that God is not sinning. But thanks be to God for his ultimate sacrifice in Jesus. The Lamb who was worthy to open up the seals. God's perfect sacrifice. As young Christians, let us accept this sacrifice. In this salvation that we get through Jesus Christ, let's not give it up for the things of the world. In closing, our pastor, my, our pastor told us once that he pitied the Christian of the time because we have so much access to knowledge, it did not allow us to fully understand the enormity of both. So many different translations. So many people speaking these false gospels. So many genealogies. And many people have lost their faith because of all these things. That's why Paul says, work out your faith with fear and trembling. This faith that we've been given, let us not trade it for the things of the world, but let us maintain this. This salvation that we've been given, that we did not pay for. <laughs> this one is free. What do you mean now? What do you mean now? He has forgiven us. All we need to do is accept this wonderful grace that He has given us. Yes, you make the sound. Do some My mother, in closing, my mother oftentimes tells me that. As a young boy, I need to seek God early. Amen. Amen. And this is what we've gone through. I have truly come to understand the importance of God. It's something that sets you apart wherever you go. When people in the world don't have a sense of direction, when people in the world are doing their evil things, the salvation with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that has been given to us. The Lord says, finally in closing, that if we would seek him and turn away from our sins, that he, the Lord, will heal our land. Mm. He, the Lord, will heal our land. The things wrong in our life, the things that we don't know how to fix, the doctor says six months to live, God says three years. School says you have been rejected. School will still be God says another school will select you. Yeah. 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 All you need do yeah. is yeah. accept Christ yeah. and follow in the path that He has given you. If we do this, we will overcome the world. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah.
Please lift up your hand wherever you are. With humility, we want to call up stage a brother, a free year, a Sari, and um, Dominic Mesa. The two of you come over, one of you will pray. Pray for the young people that we will be they will be obedient. And then um, Dominic will pray for the elderly people. Okay, so Dominic, pray for the young people, your generation. Shall we bow down our heads? Father Lord, as we're here today, shall you bless us? 
As we go to the new school year, show you also blessings of that year. Follow the Lord, give us your word, and shall we be blessed? Shall we have you in our hearts so that we will know you? We will not draw away from you. Our hearts will stay with you and never be into temptation. Pray for my generation and no new generations to come, Father Lord. Let the youth know that who they're supposed to be. Father Lord, as these young children go from first grade, even kindergarten, and preschool and up, Father Lord, give them the blessing that they'll know you in their hearts, Father Lord. They will not draw away from you, and no one else shall draw them away from you. Father Lord, you've given us this, these years of us that are becoming seniors this year also. Those that are going off to college, shall they be blessed? Some of them might, not even, might have scholarships, and I know that that will happen as they go into their senior year also. Father Lord, shall they know you and not be drawn away? You've given them so much, and you've given them life to, to give them blessing onto their parents. Father Lord, we're here for you. Bless the younger children and the older children. But as the young ones go off to school, nothing shall draw them away from you, of course. Amen. God, please help us. Help people that are elderly. Even though they have lived most of their lives, some of them don't even know you. Please, God, help them open their hearts to you. Help them know who you are. And please, even no matter how old they are, you can still speak to them. You can still talk to them. God, please help them. Give them this power. Give them this so they will obey and they will trust you. Even though they are gone out to work, they go in places, and I know there are going to be some people that will drift them away from you. God, we pray that you will save their hearts. Save them through everything. I know that there are some evil, evil people planning to attack them because of their age and because they don't know you. God, please help them know you. Help them know who you are. Help them see the beautiful and the wonderful things you have done. And help them see the, the amazing, the grateful God, the merciful God that you are. So that through their lives, they will know you. God, please help them. And help the whole church. Even There are some people that, that are here that do not know you. God, help them know you. Help them trust you. Help them through whatever that they are facing through. Help them know that they can seek you through everything because you are there for us. You are always going to be there for us even though sometimes we don't believe you. Sometimes we think that you are not who you are. We know that you will do, do amazing and beautiful stuff for us in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Speaker. Can we add another one? And a third one. For the five years that I've been here, I have scouted three kids. I saw one in Manassas, I have seen one here, and I saw one in New Jersey. The future is so bright for this church. Let's keep encouraging them. And the sky will be their beginning. Amen. You. Youth. 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 I can't really hear y'all. Youth. 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 Now we're going to call on our sister Eliana for Kites and Offering.
Praise the Lord. Um, before we do that one, uh, in order not to waste time as they get ready, we want to call Mr. and Mrs. Kwati, right? Okay, to bring their Thanksgiving and then we will take the announcement. Once we finish the graduation, then we are done. So with a clap of things to the Lord, let's welcome our brother and our sister. Mm -hmm.